Hello everybody, um, we're in module 3 of uh, CSC 121, Graphical Python Programming. The purpose of this video is to give you a walkthrough of creating a image viewer. So let's get started and lay out a UI that uh, that we can use in a Python program to display images. So I've already downloaded the GUI template and the GUI template UI uh, files from Blackboard. Here's where we are in Blackboard in Module 3. You can see the two files, the GUI template and the GUI template.ui. So we'll use those as a starting point. One additional thing that you're going to need in this project, you need an image to display. So uh, go ahead and download the bitcoin.jpg file from the uh, Blackboard um, item. And we'll save that to the same folder as our program. This must be in the same location as your program unless you're going to specify some sort of a, a path to it. So I'm going to download that file, right click and save link as in Firefox, and get to my flash drive. Module 3, Image Viewer is the folder that I created on my flash drive for this. So I'm saving bitcoin.jpg to that uh, folder. Just as a double check, here I am inside the image viewer folder with the GUI template uh, py and the GUI template.ui and the bitcoin.jpg file that we just downloaded. So um, we'll go ahead and, and start Qt Designer and modify this GUI template and save it. One thing, I, I'm pretty sure most of you know this, but you can play these videos at like 1.5 speed if you click the gear in YouTube. Um, I took a solar, uh, well actually a lot of solar classes at uh, NC State. A couple of them were online and um, it was easy for me to to go ahead and just play the videos at 1.5 speed. Everybody um, is interested in saving time and also if you're, you know, if you think I'm talking too slowly, feel free to speed me up in YouTube or slow me down in YouTube as far as that goes. So um, one last thing, if you do find these videos useful, please send me an email. Uh, I'm doing them they're a fair amount of work to do since I'm my own microphone person and scene person and all that uh, when you're doing the videos if they're not useful to you I would like to know that or if they are useful to you just give me a little bit of feedback so that I know if uh, if you um, are using these things so all right I'm gonna right click on the GUI template.ui and open up QT5 designer there we are. There's our standard template. First thing I'm going to do is go to File and Save As. And I'm going to save this as image underscore viewer. Okay, so got that done. And now let's go ahead and put a label on this uh, well, let's make this a little bit bigger, just so we've got plenty of room. I'll move my push buttons around a little bit. Okay, so we're going to need a label. Now, here's the thing. It, with QT5, you can use a label to display an image. You could actually use a button. Anything that's got a pix map property, you could use it to display an image. A label is a pretty lightweight little control or widget, so that's what we'll use here, and we'll make that our container to display images. So I just drug that label to the uh, dialog, 
I'm going to go ahead and triple click on the label until I get that vertical bar without having anything highlighted. And I'm going to name it Label Image. And don't forget to hit Enter so that QT Designer will actually take this change. I just hit Enter. Okay, I now have a label image there. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. Just being careful here. And then let's resize this label so that we get it. Uh, I'm looking for a, a width of about uh, 160 by 160. So if you're looking at the Q widget uh, width and height, you can see that um, there's showing like 251 and 181, something like that. So we can go ahead and just type in here 160, hit enter. And for the height, 160, hit enter. Okay, so now we've got that. Uh, Going to go ahead and change the properties on the keyframe to be wind panel and frame shadow, make it sunken. Okay, now we can kind of tell what we have here. You could go with larger dimensions on this. Don't uh, don't think that uh, mean you know you need to stay with 160. Um, I was actually thinking I could you know get by without resizing this. Uh, let's just go ahead and make this smaller again, uh, just so you can see. Okay, so we don't need any text in our uh, label anymore. I click the label image and I'm going to go ahead and just take that text out of it because we're using this to uh, display images so uh, we we really don't need to uh, have any text in there. One property that may be of interest to you, you notice right here where it says Pics Map and then one underneath there is titled Scaled Contents. What this says is if we put a pix map in this label that it will automatically scale the image up or down so that it looks it maintains its aspect ratio correctly in that container you can set this property in code or you can set it here in qt designer I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like it is in QT Designer and show you how to set it in code. But obviously you can see right here if you check that, it will set it to scaled contents in QT Designer. Okay, so one last thing that we need here is we need a push button. So I'm going to drag the push button widget over there and size it appropriately. and we, we can set some text on this push button to say display image. How about that? And we'll make it a little bit bigger. <clears throat> okay. I didn't put a keyboard shortcut on it, but if you want to put a an ampersand D there, and so that will cause the little underscore to show. It means you can hold down the Alt key and hit D without having to use the mouse to click that button. Let's go ahead and change the name of that push button to be push button display. Triple click. Display. Don't forget to hit enter. And save our... Uh, save our dialogue. So we got it saved just as kind of a, a check to make sure everything actually saved for us. Going to close it. <clears throat> Going to go to recent. Open it up again. Make sure that I have a push button display and a label image and all that. So you can see that we have our uh, dialogue pretty well set up. <clears throat> so I'm going to close this. I'm going to go ahead and open up the GUI template.py file with Tani. And then I'll save it as, 
let's cancel for a second I'm gonna save it as the same name as my UI file so I'll open it up in Tawny and save it as image underscore viewer dot py so here we go there it is first thing I'll do files save as I'm gonna go to my flash drive There we go. Okay. Image underscore viewer dot py. Okay. I'll go ahead and change my comment up here. and save it all right so a couple things about this first thing if we're going to use the input dialog to ask the name of the image that we want to display uh, then we're going to need to get um, a di couple additional libraries included you may remember this Q input dialog and if we're going to use the get um, text part of that then we're going to need to import the queue line edit as well queue line edit and there needs to be a comma between those okay we're also going to be working with pix maps, so we need the QPix map uh, library as well if you're going to work with pix maps. So from PYQT5, and this is in the QT GUI module. All right, so this and these two you have to have those imported for this to work okay so next let's connect up our uh, well let's change our GUI template here we need to load a different UI file okay got that changed to image viewer UI now we need to connect up our push button self dot how about display method okay got that now we actually need to write our display method and notice it has to be indented so that it's part of this my form class so right there we are def display method okay so first thing we're going to do is um, pop up our dialog so that we can ask for a user um, for a um, some text so the name of the image specifically you may remember from the dialog material that most of the QT dialogs return a tuple. That's two items back. The first one is the, the text. The second one is what button they pressed. So here's our tuple right here. Two items coming back. Okay. Equals Q input dialog dot get text that's the method that we're using okay now first thing it's got to get is a reference to self okay then this is the title 
shows up at the top of the dialog. That's our title. And you notice I put a comma. And then this is going to show up inside the dialog right next to the line edit for them to key something in. File name. How about that? Okay. And then this is going to be our line edit. That's using the line edit dot normal. Okay. And then we're going to, what is in that line edit to begin with is going to be an empty string. So I tried to describe each of the things that that line edit, uh, uh, that this get text method takes. Okay. So at this point, if we're here in the program, then they have typed something in, hopefully, and press the OK button. If not, we'll just, you know, basically do nothing. So I'm going to put an if statement in here. If OK pressed, and we want to make sure they gave us some text. Text is not equal to an empty string. Okay. That's our uh, check to make sure they press the OK button and they actually type something in. If they didn't do both of those things, then we're not going to do anything. That's our label on our dialog form. This is where I told you when we were designing the dialog that we could set the scaled contents for the PIX map in code, or you could do it at design time, either one. Scaled contents, we're going to set that to true. Okay. Next, we'll set our PIX map. We're going to create a PIX map. So here's the name of the variable that's going to get our that's going to hold our PIX map, and here's where we actually will create that PIX map. Okay, so this one little method right here is doing a whole lot. It's going out to the flash drive or uh, disk wherever you've got that image saved whatever you typed in here it's gonna go get that image load it and create a pix map and then we're gonna assign that pix map that got created to our variable called pix map so at that point we have a pix map loaded into our program Label image, set, picks, map. This is actually what displays that picks map in our label. And it's always good practice. Now on Windows and Linux, it's not so important. It seems to be important on the Macs for some reason. Uh, but it never hurts to put this in. This actually forces the graphic subsystem to go out there and repaint that label. Um, like I said, Windows and Linux, most of the time, they do a pretty good job of going ahead and just refreshing it when, when something's loaded in there. If you are having trouble with seeing the, the image on Mac or maybe you've got a really slow Windows computer and it's not uh, showing you that you can always add a repaint and that holds true for almost any widget and then this Q application dot process events is a really um, neat little method 
Windows in Visual Basic has something similar called Do Events, but basically this yields control from our application back to the operating system so that it can process things. And one of those things that it might need to process is that new image that we put in the label. So uh, it's always good practice to add some of these things in there uh, just so that it makes your application more responsive. So at this point, um, if I didn't typo something, then we should have a working uh, program. That's not a whole lot of code, is it? We added this, we added this, we changed our uh, UI file that's getting loaded, we connected our display method here, here's where we showed the dialog, okay, this is where we're doing something if they pressed OK and they typed some text in. If they didn't do both of those things, <coughs> excuse me, then this just skips out and nothing happens. So let's run it. There's our dialog showing up right there. Remember when we click this we should get an input dialog and asking us for some text. And do you remember the name of uh, the image file that we have out there? Our image file name is bitcoin.jpg. So let's try it out. Display image. There's our dialog asking for the file name. I typed in bitcoin.jpg and I hit OK and look what we have. So there's a working uh, image viewer. Obviously you could use it to display other images. You could, you know, if you, as long as you uh, provide it uh, a working image here, uh, you have a universal image viewer. And of course, you may want to do something with the size of our label here as well. Okay? Well, good luck. That's how to make a working image viewer. The code is out there in Blackboard. And if you want to get the code or you can, uh, you know, Design it on your own using the video. Either way, good luck.